Hello everybody, and today we are taking a look at a game by the name of Bermuda. It is a visual novel hybrid. It is developed and published by Invert Mouse, as you may have seen on the splash screen before. There is a demo version available on Steam, however the full game will only set you back £1.49. There are so far two reviews on the demo version, they've both been a bit negative saying the story is a bit slow to progress and the gameplay is slow and there's a religious message somewhere in there but apparently on the uh, the full release of the game there's about 10 reviews so far at this time of recording and they're all positive so all 10 out of 10 are positive so maybe just the, the demo version is not that great but we're not going to go too far today so we're just going to do the demo actually and just do acts one and two so perhaps it's the first two acts are a bit slow and then in the full game things really speed up later on and become a lot more interesting i don't know i guess we'll find out let's jump in i've got the voices on by the way so i won't do much talking hey can you hear that yeah probably just a ship or something I don't see it. No ship I knew of made a noise that weird. Then again, it was also weird for Joe to be calling me out so suddenly. Let's not stray too far out. Paul will wonder where we went. It's fine. I want some time alone. Oh? If you need to relieve yourself, there's actually a bathroom back there. Okay. Uh, so insensitive. You said something? Never mind. I don't think that's what she meant, dude. Hey, I was just playing around. You know I'm worried about you. Oh, okay. Listen, Eddie, I... There's that noise again. Sounds like it's getting closer. Joe opened her mouth to speak, but the noise blared once more and drowned out her words. It's not that loud a noise. A light beam shot out from under the sea. Guess that was what made the noise. Not that it made things any less confusing. All I knew was that Joe was far too close to that beam. See? I thought we were in space. I mean, those look like stars and there's aliens and shit, apparently. Like, what? Okay. Moving on. Yeah, she's been abducted by aliens. What sea? The sea of stars? I could have sworn I saw them come this way. Joanna? Eddie? I thought it only took Joe, not Eddie. Okay. Oh, and it got Paul too. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, Finian, she's the one that you see, I think, on the, the Steam Store page. She might also be the character that's the sort of icon. I'm not sure. Well, that's a lightsaber. That pose at the beginning is a very anime-esque intro. Oh. Well, the, the art style. Preparation is complete. Ready to begin experiment. And that sounds like Jenna. Understood. Conduct Operation 32 on male specimen A. What kind of operation? Remember to perform procedures D through G. Be sure to leave no traces behind. Ah, uh, no. Acknowledged. Commencing Operation 32. No, please don't. I remember being put onto some kind of operating table. What took place after that, I could no longer recall. Perhaps it was for the best. Well, you're up and walking around, so I don't think it was too bad then. Now I found myself standing next to Paul, surrounded by aliens. 
Ones in blue armor and robes, they donned helmets that resembled water tanks, making their faces hard to discern. All the ceiling lights emitted a blue glow, making even the interior resemble the sea. The place smelled like the ocean, too. Joe stood before me, trapped in some sort of chamber. Surrounding her were aliens operating on control panels. What are you bastards doing to Joanna? Get your scrubby hands off my girl! Well, I didn't get the impression earlier that she was with you, dude, but... Okay. Paul always managed to speak his mind, no matter how dire a situation seemed. I only feared the aliens might make an example out of him. You humans are always so noisy. We're sending you three home. Keep quiet before we change our minds. You kidnapped us and we're expected to just sit and obey you? That's just wrong. Be grateful we gave you all translation devices. Without them, you'd have no clue what's going on. Actually, I would argue that I still had no clue what was happening. Fair Paul point. did all the talking on my behalf. If I chimed in with more shouting, the aliens might kill us on the spot. Joe slapped her hands against the glass. She tried speaking to us, but the chamber blocked out her words. Beam fully charged. Prepared to send specimen home on command. Acknowledged. Fire when ready. In a flash, Joe vanished from the chamber. I half expected her to return after another flash, as if we were watching a magic trick. But that never happened. What did you freaks do to Joanna? The females returned home. You two are about to join her. Once you're back on the surface, you'll forget all that's happened here. Settle down and let us do our job. With Joe gone, I shifted my eyes to the portholes on the wall. Water filled the space outside, with fish swimming by on occasions. We must be inside some form of alien submarine. Okay. If the aliens were indeed sending us home, there was nothing else I would have wished for more. I only prayed they were telling the truth. Uh-oh. What's the matter? The beam's refusing to charge. Looks like the device has malfunctioned. Well, if we're in the sea, can't we just surface and just drop us off on the nearest shoreline? Let me see that. That's impossible. The beam's never failed us in all these years. A bunch of liars, all of you. I'll bet you're plotting some other plan for us. What now? That human is acting rowdy and we have no way of sending him back. We might have to silence them both. Those words made even Paul fall quiet. I should have known things would never turn out smoothly. It had been a while since I last spoke. Perhaps I should say something. But one wrong word and we were goners. Well, Paul does seem a bit of a dick, so I mean, I don't object to that, you know, if you want to get rid of him, that's fine. I've been stood here quietly in the corner, so you know, you got nothing against me, right? Yes, it's too risky to keep these two on our ship. I agree, we should act without delay. That's enough. Everyone, including the aliens, froze upon hearing this unfamiliar voice. Be at peace, all of you. We summon these guests to better understand the surface world. It's our duty to ensure they return home unharmed. So the surface world, so we're in the sea, our sea, on our planet, so just bring the submarine up, casually drop us off, and then off you go. It's not hard. Don't need no beam. C commander Finyomu. Of course, as you will. That alien just called this girl Commander. She must have been no older than five or six. In fact, I never even noticed her until she spoke. This little kid is your commander? Huh, <laughs> Eddie, guess we got nothing to worry about. There's no way I'll let clowns like them threaten me. Paul marched toward the girl, who looked him in the eye and appeared unfazed. None of the aliens stepped in Paul's way. Paul was well over six feet tall. Perhaps even these aliens were intimidated. One more step, and your head goes flying. A woman appeared before Paul. She showed up so swiftly that even he was caught off guard. There was a blade of some sort in her hand. With the sword pressed against Paul's neck, he had no choice but to retreat a step. No one harms the commander under my watch. Know your place, surfacers. You're on our ship. I'll be more than happy to send you both out into the sea. 
There's no need for threats, Mukan. As you desire, Commander. Mukan sheathed her blade upon hearing Finyomu's order. It looked like this woman obeyed the commander like the rest of them. Let us conduct a meeting to discuss what actions we must take. Until then, the two humans shall remain on board as guests. Funny how we could be abducted and then be referred to as guests. Paul made no further advances against the aliens. He cast a glare at Mukan, who paid him no attention. At least our lives were spared for now. As for how long things would stay this way, only time would tell. Oh, yeah, I forgot. It's a very blue colour scheme going on, but then again, we are under the sea, and the aliens are in the water, water blue. Makes sense, ocean. Nice. I forgot to put that in my notes, the blue scheme, or did I? Oh, no, it's in the title. You'll, you'll see when you watch this video. Anyway, ignore me. Moving on, Act 1. This is where the fern begins. Bonus conversations. Um, I'll go on. We'll explore them while we're here. Or maybe just one or two. We'll see. We'll start with the uh, sexy commander, shall we? During a stroll, I walked past Finyomu and decided to say hello. Finyomu, however, never even turned around, let alone responded. I snuck closer and saw she was glued to the television. Looked like she was watching a cartoon of some sort. The characters were unfamiliar to me. Maybe it was from Finyomu's home planet. Once in a while, Finyomu would look around to check if anyone was watching. I took cover behind a wall. This hobby of hers must have been a secret. Finyomu wanted to maintain her captain image, but I guess she was still a child after all. I moved on, leaving Finyomu to her pastime. Uh, yeah, whoever the uh, one of the mystery aliens was who was failing to send us back because they broke the beam. Bored out of my mind, I decided to explore the ship. A couple of aliens I walked past were staring at a porthole. Oh, hello there, human. Good day. Got to say, I'm pretty surprised you guys called out to me. Yes, well, not all of us hate you to the bone. Glad to hear it. You guys are pretty focused on that window there. What's up? We've been hearing rumors of mermaid sightings. You kind of believe in mermaids too? Oh, guess you humans have heard about it as well. More just in movies and stuff. I guess there are people out there who believe it though. Anyway, if mermaids really do exist, surely you would have seen them by now. You guys pretty much live in the ocean. Us? Nah, I'm just a part-timer, actually. Eh? And I'm an intern, looking for a stable job in engineering after this. Oh. My mistake. Okay, not sure what's uh, going on there. Part-timers, what? Talk to the uh, overzealous one with the sword. Walking past the dining room, I noticed a book sitting on the table. Maybe someone left this here by mistake. I might just give the book a quick flip through. Looked like it was a novel written in the alien's home language. No chance of me reading it then. The cover showed a male and female alien kissing one another. Love hearts dotted the pink background behind them. What a stereotypical romance novel cover. It's a hentai manga. Footsteps sounded behind me. I quickly put the novel down. After all, nobody gave me permission to read the book. Human. What? D did you pick up that book? I... Uh, yeah. Sorry. I did. Was it yours? Yes, I mean no. As if I'd read a book like that. Quite rude of you to look at my other people's belongings. Well, I... They never should have left it around, I guess, but still. Well, guess that's a life lesson. Don't leave your hentai collection out in the open. Guess it was Mukan's book. Uh, go on, let's talk to the bellend. See what he's got to rant about this time. With Joanna gone, I guess it's just you and I now. Oh no, Edward's 
okay, isn't he? Was it Paul who was the one who was all ragey? I don't know. I'm lost. Seems that way. Thinking back, it's pretty weird how we became friends in the first place. We're as different as they come. It's all in God's will. Well, that and we did work in the same place. To be honest, first time we met, I thought you were pretty wimpy. But somehow, you always bring peace to those around you. I might even be a little envious to tell you the truth. Thanks, Paul. We do make an interesting team, to say the least. I'm sure we can get out of this alive. Oh no, yeah, we're Edward. That is Paul. He is the dick. Okay. We'd better. If you die on me, I'm gonna kill you. Yes, he, he's, he's the dick. Buddy, yes. have a think about what you just said. <laughs> yeah, not very bright. Typical high school kind of jock there. And the quiet girl who... We're not sure why she was out. I think she was just looking for some peacetime, looking at the stars. We'll see what she has to say. Joanna and I used to visit the same beach every year. Do you remember what's so special about this year, Eddie? You're turning 21. Come on, as if I'd forget. So, okay, we weren't in space. The reason for the stars, we were stood at nighttime on a beach. Okay, okay, I see. I was referring to a different anniversary. It's been 15 years since we've met. Never mind. But we're not dating, so what's the big deal? I thought you were with Paul, or... Yeah, because he said that you were his, so... Your birthday's coming soon, so it's a bit early, but I bought you something. Oh, thanks. Here, it's a cross necklace. I hope God will always watch over you. Eddie, how thoughtful. I'll definitely cherish it. And Joe, there's something else I want to tell you. Oh? You know that restaurant we always go to on Friday nights? It closed the other day. That's really sad. Okay, kind of an odd thing to just randomly come out with. Bit of a moment ruiner there, Redwood, but... Alright then. <sighs> Whatever. Indeed, she's not best pleased with you now, dude. Best retreat. On to Act 2. The aliens escorted Paul and I to a bunk bed and left us there. It was as if they expected us to just sit still and await their decision. I found myself shivering under the ship's cool temperature. Perhaps that was the way those aliens liked it, but certainly not I. Even the walls felt freezing to touch. Paul seemed unaffected by this. In all fairness, he was one of the sturdiest guys I knew. Those aliens are discussing our fate as we speak, Eddie. We need to find out what they're talking about. Are you saying we should eavesdrop? They're already on edge about us. Besides, we have no idea where their meeting room is. It's on the top floor. I scouted out the place while they were taking us down here. You never fail to surprise me. Being in jail could teach you a lot. Well, I guess they never did say we must stay on this bunk bed. Now you're talking. I've noted where the security cameras are as well. We just need to be careful. Besides, if anything happens, that Finyomu brat will cover our ass. She's risking a lot to keep us safe. It seems nasty to be using her like that. You're being too kind. Finyomu's a child. Her mind's unstable. A few more aliens whisper in her ear and she'll have a change of heart. There's no justice in what these aliens did to us. We have the right to do what we must. I felt uncertain about Paul's lack of faith, but we should indeed discover more about this meeting. Most of the aliens were participating in the discussion, so security should be thin. Exchanging nods with Paul, we made our move. I prayed the meeting results would bring us hope and not despair. So we're going to try and sneak up onto their little meeting place. Nice font, actually, that. Pretty neat. Here we go, then. A and D to move. Left and right. W to interact with glowing objects. So we can interact in this and hide in a bathroom. Okay. Light switches. 
so we can turn lights off. Uh, oh, dear God, let's uh, not do that. <laughs> what does this do? Oh, God, no, 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 no. Huh? What? Why, why does he hide in the bog? Who knows? Oh, dear, quick. Oh. Uh... Uh, no, we don't need the teleporter, I don't think. What we can do is... Set off an alarm. Okay, no, that, that, that didn't go well. I wanted to make him go through it. So perhaps we can... Set this one off. Wait, wait, what? what? Oh no, come on. Let's uh, turn the lights out and hide in here. Now, if they both come down and I can sneak past them because they can't see me in the dark. Or at least when I stand still. Oh. Yeah, kind of, kind of stuck here now. Okay, they're going back up. Uh, <laughs> not going too well, this, actually. Um, yep, go on. Go, 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 go in the lift, go. God, camera, camera, camera. We need to get rid of this guy off the floor because we are just failing hard right now. We need him to go. We really need him to go. Yeah, go on. Go up to the next floor. Okay, right. Ah, they're all going up. Right, so if he goes up as well, which he's not, but if we're quick, uh, uh, quick, hide. Right, now they'll both go past us and then we're safe. Oh, dear God. Could have gone a bit better, but oh well, we, we made it. We made it. outside the meeting room. After checking to make sure the coast was clear, we pressed our ears against the door. As I've said, it's our job to ensure these surfacers return home safe. With all due respect, Commander, this is about more than any of us. Watch your tone around Commander Finyomu. It's fine, Mukon. We all deserve a say in this matter. By all, I guess she means everyone but us. I put up a finger, signaling Paul to keep his voice down. If the aliens detected our presence, who knew what the consequence would be? If these humans escape and tell the surface world about us, our entire civilization will be at risk. Yes, and then there's that girl we sent off. Our charge beam failed right afterward. There's no way to tell if her memories were even erased properly. For all we know, she might be on the surface now telling everyone up there about us. Probably won't believe her though. They'll just think she's crazy. I'll assign one of you to scan the surface and locate the girl. Once she's found, monitor her full time and check for suspicious activities. I was more concerned about whether that beam actually managed to send Joe home. Maybe the beam broke down when she was still in the ocean. 
This warrants a discussion with our people back home. Rest easy. Your concerns will be passed on. For now, let us vote on how this situation should be handled. The two humans should be purged. We've had to kill on this ship in the past. This will be no different. I agree. For our people's sake, the surfacers must be sacrificed. Commander Finyomu has a point. It's unfair for us to kill the humans with hardly a thought. Milkan, let us hear your opinion. I beg your forgiveness, Commander Finyomu, but I must choose to pass on the matter. Hmm. Very well. Let us continue. Our entire race is at risk here. Losing two surfacers is a small matter by comparison. We can send the humans into the sea. Let them decide their own fate. Paul gestured me to leave. I trailed him as he headed back for the elevator. It's obvious most of those bastards want us dead. I doubt that Finyomu kid can keep them in check for long. Then there's Joanna. We need to find out if she's okay. I'm no man if I'm unable to keep my woman safe. You see, if they take us, like, relatively close to the shore, I have no problem with them dumping us in the sea and we'll swim back. That's fine. But then they were concerned about our memories still being intact and us remembering that they're there. But, again, if we all go and start blabbing that we saw aliens and they kidnapped us and we were in the sea, they'll just think we're all crazy. So, there's not much of a concern there, I don't think. The aliens did talk about spying on Joe. That must mean there's a way of doing so from this ship. We just need to find out how. The aliens spoke about their people being at risk. I guess they had a home planet somewhere in space. But then surely we should be on a spaceship and not a submarine. No, none of that mattered now. Our priority should be checking if Joe was okay. God help us. Okay, guys, that, that's it then for this little demo of Bermuda. Uh, what to say, really? Um, the story's not too bad. I don't think it's slow at all, really. It progressed quite quick. No, I don't really see what the complaints are about, you know. And again, once, once the full thing released, everyone was like, oh, yeah, it, it's pretty good, all the reviews were positive, so no problems there, the story's good, I want to find out more about what happens, that's for certain. I like the music, um... Yeah, I didn't really have any problem with the sort of puzzling and, you know, getting the guards to come down, getting past them, apart from I sucked at it, of course, you know, I wasn't that good at it, you know, but, I mean, there was no problem with the gameplay, I don't see, again, any issues of, you know, things being slow and... To progress i mean it was there but that's because i failed i actually did play that bit earlier and i got through it much much faster i just completely gimped on it that time so no i don't think you know anyway as i say it seems good it's only one pound 49 so if you want you can go pick that up link will be the description to the page and there, as I say, there's the demo available if you want to grab it, but that's just what you've seen here now. So that's it for me then from today. Thank you all for watching, and I shall see you once again in a, another video. Miss out.